In this video, I'm going to give an overview of our project, RESTful Microservices, with Spring Boot and IntelliJ IDEA. As with many intro videos, I'm recording this one last, and the good news is I get to show you how the project works. We're going to create three different microservices. Most of our time is going to be on this one called Plant Diary, which is where we can collect information about plants that someone has planted in their yard or maybe somewhere else. We'll call those specimens. The user can enter some details and upload a photo. Eventually, we create another microservice, a headless one, one without a user interface, called Photo Processor. And the job of this microservice is to resize the photo and watermark the photo that was uploaded in the Plant Diary microservice. Finally, we have a dashboard microservice, and this simply reports on the progress of all of that resizing and watermarking. You see we have three separate microservice applications. Two have a user interface, one does not, and all three are connected by some type of publish-subscribe mechanism. We'll start by using Kafka, and then we'll also see how we can deploy this on Azure's Event Hub. So without further ado, let's walk right in and see a demonstration. I've deployed the largest of the microservices, the Plant Diary microservice, or the one that's going to collect specimens. We can interact with this one of two ways. There is a web front end that I built with Timeleaf and also used a bit of Bootstrap and jQuery. We can also use Postman to interact with it. Now this is a Windows machine and I have installed WAMP or Windows Apache MySQL and PHP on the machine. So we can do an easy before and after test. Notice that this is MySQL as viewed through PHP MyAdmin. We're looking at the specimen table and currently the final row says wonderful fall color 3974 minus 8451. Let's see what happens when we add a new specimen. Let's start with uh, latitude. We'll go 6400 up around Iceland or Greenland and longitude of minus 77.01 again around Greenland. And we'll call this National Plant of Greenland. The plant is an autocomplete that's actually sourced from a different service, and that service is not running right now. Uh, I'll go ahead and type it in. We'll say dwarf fireweed, but that will typically uh, be an autocomplete. Now let's go ahead and choose a photo, and I'll simply choose one I already have. We'll go with our Berkwood viburnum, and then I'll choose submit. If we take a look back at the database, we see now National Plant of Greenland in 64 minus 7701. So we see we're able to persist. We can also interact with this using Postman. Note what happens when I take this JSON and I post it to this endpoint. We got a 200 response back, which is a good sign. I'll go back and refresh our database one more time. And we see beautiful orange flowers, 4023 minus 10153. Beautiful orange flowers, just like so. As a matter of fact, this gives us a handy way to delete as well. If you notice the specimen ID on this is specimen ID 87. So let's find a delete. And what you'll notice is with the traditional microservice is that we have our endpoint here. And then we have the key that we want to delete there, which we know is 87. I'm going to have Postman invoke a delete call on this. And we see once again, status 200 OK. Let's go back and take a look at our database and see if our record is still there. And you see that the record is indeed gone. So all of this is happening with our Spring Boot application, which is sitting on top of our database. Now let's consider the other microservices. Since the dashboard microservice is a different microservice, I have it in a different IntelliJ IDEA project. So I simply start that up. And one thing I'll point out is that I have these two running simultaneously. So the dashboard, I assigned a new port because they're both essentially running Tomcat. We can't have two Tomcat instances with the same port. Now take a look, it's a fairly straightforward dashboard, but it's really just looking at our topics. And it's doing a bit of math on there. So the dashboard you see is simply listening to photo in, photo out, photo exception. In the case that we have here, it says something is unprocessed. And what that means is it's gone into photo in because we have our plant diary microservice here. But it does not appear in photo out or photo exception, which means that the photo processor has not yet processed it. And that makes sense because so far I've only started two of our three microservices the Plant Diary microservice, and then the Dashboard microservice. To reprocess the photos, I need to start our third microservice, the Photo Processor. And you notice that I have three computers representing the Photo Processor. That's because this is the one that we want to think about scaling. Scaling up, 
or scaling out because it's the most heavy lifting of all three services. Plant Diary does a little bit. Dashboard does just a little bit. It's really just showing the status of our topics or our event hub. Photo Processor is really doing a lot of heavy compute. Let's start that one up. As our third microservice, it is in again another IntelliJ IDEA project. And I actually am not worried about the port on this one because remember this one is headless. In other words, it does not have a user interface. It's just a worker. Well, I go ahead and start debug and let's let it go. The application is started and it's done so relatively quickly. Let's go back and refresh our dashboard and you notice as soon as that photo processor microservice begins, our item goes from unprocessed to processed. Let's try that out one more time. Simply choose a new file. And the neat thing is you can see that the indeed the watermark has applied and the, the photo has been resized. I hit submit and we go back to my plant diary and you see this one was very quick because the photo processor already picked it up and processed it. But now let's try something that's completely invalid that should throw an exception. Just a normal old text file which can't be resized or watermarked. So I hit submit, we come back, and we see sure enough that this one shows up in exceptions and also shows up in unprocessed because there was an exception so it was unable to complete processing. Maybe we ought to go ahead and take it out of unprocessed, but nonetheless, you can see how our three microservices now work together. A couple other things I'll point out while we're here. First of all, you'll see a healthy DAO layer and a lot of this is working with one of two things, either our database directly which as I mentioned is MySQL, but we're using it through Spring JPA and Hibernate, which makes it really easy to use. Also Retrofit, which we use to parse JSON. iPlant Retrofit DAO is telling us to go out to an endpoint and get some JSON data and return it back as a series of objects. The neat thing is, once we've finished writing the project, Locally, we can deploy it on Azure, and in place of Kafka, we'll use Azure Event Hub and see how the application can interact with each other. So see here on the Azure dashboard, I have several of the apps, a few I've deployed multiple times, which is why you see some duplicates. But nonetheless, you see the dashboard here, and right now there's nothing for it to process, and you'll also see a screen that looks very familiar. This is our Plant Diary microservice. So let's change the latitude to 40.05 and the longitude to minus 77.01, uh, probably just a little bit east and a little bit north of New York City. Now here on Azure, I didn't put in a database and I didn't put in the image resizing. Just to keep things simple, I really just wanted to demonstrate how Azure Event Hub can work. So I can go ahead and choose a file, but nothing will actually be resized and nothing will be uploaded. I'm just going to go ahead and hit submit. And you see it's been submitted. We refresh our dashboard and notice what we have in unprocessed now. We have pawpaw fruit season. I can change this to a photo of a maple tree and submit. We refresh our dashboard and we'll see that we now have pawpaw fruit season and photo of a maple tree. Now I paused the video for a moment so I could start the plant photo processor, which is currently starting. I put a bit of logic in that photo processor to just look for the word photo. And if it sees photo, it goes to exceptions, I believe. If it doesn't see photo, it goes to processed. I might have those reversed, but nonetheless, once the photo processor finishes up, we'll see one of these go to processed and the other go to exception. Meanwhile, here's a neat graph that Event Hub gives us that shows us the amount of messages that are both put onto an Event Hub or taken off of an Event Hub. It's a good way to take a look at your throughput. Now the photo processor has started. It gives us a 404, which is oftentimes bad news, but remember this is a headless application, so we're asking it for a user interface, and it's simply telling us there is no user interface, which is what I would expect. Let's go back now and take a look at our dashboard and hit refresh. And you notice, as I mentioned, it took our items and it processed them. The photo it put into processed. The pawpaw it put into exceptions. The null there is a bit of a quirk. Safe to ignore that one for the moment. So what we'll cover in this project, big focus on Spring Boot, which is really big at services and especially microservices. In other words, when you hit a URL, when you hit an endpoint, it has to call the database, do all that interaction that we just showed. We're going to coordinate that through Spring Boot. We'll use Timeleaf to help us render HTML, but one thing you might have noticed while I was going through this demonstration, we're really not focused on a fancy front end. 
Spring Boot is really looking at the back end. As a matter of fact, a lot of our interactions could happen through Postman, as we saw, which means that someone else is drawing the front end and we're doing the back end. Spring JPA is what we use for database persistence. It is incredibly easy, requires minimal typing, and oftentimes you can do a lot without writing a line of SQL. Microservices, big focus. I've talked through that a lot already. Endpoints, which is how we, if you remember in Postman, we saw we could add a specimen, delete a specimen. Those are both endpoints. We can also update a specimen, do several other things. And then those queues, or the Azure Event Hub, is how we show interactions between microservices when one needs to send a message to another. GitHub, very important part of this course, the fundamentals of GitHub. In other words, how do I commit? How do I push? How do I pull? And then really we want to go a level deeper into expertise and consider not only branches, but how we can use branches to make our development the most effective. As a matter of fact, I used branches quite a bit while putting this together. Every learning concept I put as a separate branch, for example, here's Kafka, so that that way you can look at only the changes that I did for that one feature. And then I ended up merging them into master, all except for one branch, Azure Event Hub, I did not merge into master because in that I disabled a couple things. I just uh, wanted to simplify a little bit with the Azure deployment. CICD, continuous integration, continuous delivery, or continuous deployment. We're going to take a look at how to integrate Circle CI into GitHub, and also the purpose of the application.yaml file. And then that ties into our next subject very well, which is test-driven design. Test-driven design means we write the test first, and our feature is complete when the test pass. So we're going to try out a little bit of test-driven design and we're going to in integrate that with our CICD pipeline because the CICD pipeline will run our tests and give us immediate feedback every time we do a commit and then push to GitHub. We should never have a breaking build and this will help us ensure that we don't have that breaking build. So test-driven design has been around for a, bit, uh, a little while. We're going to look at a more recent flavor of this behavior-driven design or given when then. I really like this because it values everybody's opinion. Everybody can contribute some examples to the requirements. And then we take those examples and we make them very specific so that we can translate them directly into a unit test. And then voila, there's our test-driven design. MySQL, a traditional SQL-based database that we'll use. We'll also take a look at things like one-to-many relationships, primary key, foreign key, and basically how to organize our data architecture. Caching, do we need to hit the database every time or can we hold some things in memory? We'll take a look at caching. Logging, how to go back in history and see what happened with your application. And uh, very helpful for exception handling as well so that you can retrace some steps and figure out what might have gone wrong. And then lots of publish subscribe, both with Kafka and with Azure Event Hub. A couple of very emerging topics. The tools that we'll use. We'll be using the Java programming language, Spring Boot naturally. We'll use Maven for builds. IntelliJ IDEA for our IDE. Circle CI for CICD. Kafka, we know that's going to be our first publish subscribe architecture. Then Azure to both host our application and also uh, for Azure Event Hub. Windows Apache, MySQL, and PHP for our local database, which is MySQL. Postman to test some things out. JUnit for our unit tests. Retrofit to parse JSON. And then thumbnail later to watermark and resize the image. This is a fun project to put together. My goal is to look at several very much emerging topics in an overview level and then look at how to do a simple application of those topics. Certainly you could go deeper in some of them, but the idea here is to give a survey of how they can all interact together and how we can deploy our application. So I hope you enjoy this application. I hope you enjoy all the videos. Thank you.